Um, basically, ladies and gentlemen, again, we have x's on both sides. The main important thing I would say is um, we want to get rid of the x. We want to get rid of the square root. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I can't get the x's to the same, I mean, I can get the x's to the same side, but I can't combine them because one's under a radical, one's not under a radical. So even though, yes, we always want to get the, rat, you know, the x's to the same side, we can't combine them, do anything with them when one's, a, one's under a radical and one's not. So I'm going to get rid of the radical by squaring. Right? Because you guys agree with me in square root, it's like the same thing as raising to the 1 half. You can raise to the 2, same thing. So therefore, by doing that, I get x plus 1. Again, since we have already covered the multiplication of binomials, uh, we should know that x minus 1 squared is a perfect square trinomial. So you could use FOIL, use the box method, or if you are familiar with this so far, you'd realize that it's going to be the product. Okay, Please remember it's not x squared plus 1. You do not distribute a power across addition or subtraction. You got to use FOIL, and that's what I did. I just did it in my head. So now we have a quadratic, and you guys are familiar with quadratics because I made sure when we talked about solving quadratics, even though there's multiple methods, one thing that we made sure we did was always set our quadratic equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract an x on both sides, and I'm going to subtract a 1 on both sides. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 3x plus 0, really. So that's just going to be it. Now we can apply the zero product property to go ahead and solve. So I can, oh, I'm sorry, not, I got to factor out an x here. So I'm actually going to flip this over so I have my x's on the left side. Doesn't matter, but um, I'm just going to write it like, I just flip it around because I always like having the x's on the left side. Is that okay with everybody what I did? Okay. Now we just use the zero product property x equals zero and x minus three equals zero. Add 3, add 3, x equals 3. Now, the directions say check for extraneous solutions. And what extraneous solutions are, if you guys remember, what I told you was, you know, when we were checking our answers for solving equations, whatever your answer was, as long as you did your math right, your answer was correct for linear equations. What I'm telling you is all the math so far, at least as I'm concerned, is correct. However, you can still have extraneous solutions. Solutions are answers that actually don't make your original equation true. So you always want to make sure you go back and verify, Kyle, that your solutions are true. So let's go back over to our original equation, which is the square root of x plus 1 equals x minus 1. All right? So let's go ahead. Let's try. And I'm gonna, I usually do this in my head. But for this first problem, since you guys are asking me about it, I will, ch I will test the first answer, which was 0. So if I did the square root of 0 plus 1 equals 0 minus 1. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just plugging it back in, right? So what's 0 plus 1? One. 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Do you guys see how even though I did the math, and that's correct, but when I plug the answer back in, it's not correct, correct? So this is what we'd call extraneous. Okay, It's actually not a solution. Even though mathematically we found it to be a solution, it's not actually a solution to this equation. Now let's check 3. And now 3, I'm just going to do it in my head just to save a little time. 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So the left side is 2. 3 minus 1 is? 3 minus 1 is? So therefore, that is verified. Okay, So that one is a solution. That is extraneous. Does that make a little bit more sense on what extraneous is and how to find them? Yeah. So you're just doing the same thing. You're just, you have to check your answers, though. 